akatusaidia na vitu kama ngambu timado vitu za kufanya kazi ametumwagia mawe ametutengenezea kiwanja na ukiangalia kwamba hata maji yenyewe inajipeleka go to the youth we able to focus some activities around this youth and i have done a lot for this youth in Nairobi especially again economic empowerment bringing youth together first of all for them to understand that as single entities they can't get much but if they come together as groups we can empower them sisi tuko na kikundi ya Nairobi Metropolitan na tunashukuru sana kwa kazi ile tumefanywa na National Government Affirmative Action paka tumeweza kununua container container imeanza kufanya biashara hata kwa sasa hivi kuna mtu mmoja ameichukua zimebakia hizi zingine mbili tunatengeneza na tayari tushapata watu wataingia tukimaliza kama hii kuwaje tuko vijana 40 40 45 sasa vijana 45 watu wanakulia hapa wako na familia zao wanasomesha wanafanya mambo mengi zaidi kawa wao nimeingia nimepata familia ya kijana msichana kufitia hii kazi nimejenga kwetu nimenunua kaplot kangu na hii kazi ya kawa shi hapa Glogon mimi ningependa ku encourage youth wasio wa kusema yeye hakuna hakuna pesa hakuna nini hakuna usaidizi wakifata the right channel watapata usaidizi Eh, kwamba badala utegemee mzazi wako jitegemee we mwenyewe na kwamba uonyeshe serikali unani ya kufanya kazi ukionyesha serikali serikali itakupa morali ya kufanya hiyo kazi sisi tunaomba sabes arudi kwa hiyo kiti juu amekubali kusubiriwa na vijana na kama wote wanakuwa wakubali kusubiriwa na vijana kama sabes hii nchi ingekuwa bere sana kwa hiyo tunashukuru sana kwa sababu hizi pesa zitasaidia ku boost chama yetu za group Nairobi Metropolitan kusonga mbele na tunaomba sana Mungu amsaidie aweze kuingia tena ili aweze kutusaidia. Jenga Talanta for example is a youth initiative for young people a competition for talent music spoken word rapping dancing I do it in every constituency there's a competition we take the top 5 after which we do the Nairobi competition and we get the Nairobi winner we have done it twice we are not going to do it the third time young people love it because it's the first time they've been given a platform You know people have such talent young people have such talent but when they go to their parents to say they want to record a CD the mother can't afford it so she says my friend my son you be a hustler the day you'll get that 10000 you know or I'll try but you know it never happens because it can't be the priority for a woman in the slums who is struggling to feed another four children you get my point so what have I done I've come in to intervene there where there is talent in Nairobi I am saying the women office will facilitate
I facilitated already two or three youth groups to open up studios so that these young people can go to that studio at, an, at, at, at a much cheaper, cheaper subsidized uh, amount to be able to record their music. If you go to young people today and you ask them if they want to be empowered, they will tell you yes. They don't, they don't want to go into Thagari, no. Neither do they want to smoke bangi the whole day, no. But they have lacked somebody who could bring them something to do. So I also have a program called Value Addition. Go to every constituency today, every ward. You will find at least one youth group that has been empowered by my women rep money. My name is Linda Ogolo. I'm the chairperson of Makidayo CBO. First of all, I want to thank Honorable Rachel Shabesh, Nairobi Women Rep, for the support that she's given us so far. We've been working with her. We took a proposal to her office. It was received. We were called to go and pick the check, which we did. After that, we came and began the project of greenhouse. Specifically, we planted tomatoes. We planted the tomatoes on March 1st. Until today, we've been working on the greenhouse and we thank her so much for the support and the care. We love her so much and we pray that we work together with her from now forward. Young girls, they ask for tents and chairs they want to rent out for weddings, for funerals. I give them because they've come together and they've written the proposal. Somewhat want catering equipment, we've given them. There is even a youth group that said we want to open a resource centre for taekwondo and kickboxing etc so that youth come here to our resource center in the evening instead of spending the whole day doing what i'm telling you is not right you'll find them there doing sports i have facilitated them so why do i do it because part of our engagement as women rep is to empower the youth and if you find youth already trying to make something together like collecting garbage and mukokoteni they had one mukokoteni i give them 10. what happens immediately they employ another group of youth. And then they're able to go to wider areas of the estate. They didn't have enough mukoko tennis. They didn't have overalls. They didn't have gloves. They didn't have rakes. So when they write, an, write a proposal, I facilitate. So I have given this to the youth. Many different projects for young people, I facilitated them. So five more years will allow me to do much more than that, to increase on these projects that I've started and to think of new ones, because every day, every day, there's a new idea, and a better idea that comes from the ground. Because my office is grounded. I have women in every constituency and ward on the ground who tell me the priorities of what people want. So I never take my own projects from my own head. The projects that I take always come from the ground. And I believe that if I was given five more years, I would definitely listen more to the ground and bring interventions that change lives. I've taken Boda Boda riders to driving because they've been riding Boda Bodas without driving licenses and they're arrested all the time. So I take them until they get their driving license. I pay for the whole course until the day they get driving license. Young girls who want to do hairdressing, I'm paying for that. Others who want to do catering, I'm paying. Computer, I'm paying. Any tertiary college that young people feel they want to engage in, I decide to put my money there. Remember again, it's such a little amount of money because remember that seven million is all these projects I'm telling you, but they feel me and they wish I had more money. So imagine I could give more bursaries if I had more money and all these other things, I'll do double. So I feel my biggest limitation is that this seven million is just not enough. And sometimes it can even frustrate you. So I'm hoping that God willing, if I'm given a chance by Nairobians, it will be the first thing I'll lobby for. Increase this money so that we are able to do more for this the vulnerable people that we are working for. Pads have come from the office of the president and the office of the women rep. Who is the president? And who is the women rep? 
I'm glad that we, the, the, the seat for women rep is elected by everybody. When men are voting for us, they are also voting looking at the woman who they feel will be best placed to empower their wives, their daughters, their children, their young men and women. Because a man at the end of the day, if I come in with programs and interventions like the ones I do, be sure it is the burden of the man that I am lifting. Let me give you an example of sanitary pads. I give sanitary pads to schools. And when I'm giving sanitary pads, I looked at the most vulnerable again about the category of sanitary pads. And I said, look at the standard eight girl who misses school every month because of her periods. Why don't I engage three schools per constituency whose catchment area is the poorest slums in Nairobi? And that's what I did. So for every constituency, I gave sanitary pads. Now, when you're giving those sanitary pads, whose burden are you lifting? Is it not the man of the home or the woman for buying, buying those sanitary pads? They're actually not even buying them. When the girl would get onto her periods, she'd be told to stay home for two or three days and go back to school after that. When she's missing those three days, the young man is not missing school. So he continues to learn, she continues to stay at home. If they accumulate those three days, or four days per month, it becomes at the end of the day, for the whole year. She could have missed a month and a half of school. So we said, no, let's do that. So we've empowered, we've given sanitary pads to standard eight girls. And I didn't give them pads for a week or a, or, or a month. I gave them for a whole year. I gave sanitary pads for a whole year and four panties, because panties are still a problem in Nairobi, uh, to those girls. So today, I can be comfortable to say that some of the most poorest areas of Nairobi, the girls who are going to public schools have a supply of sanitary pads for a year. And I really want to plead with you, young girls. The sky is the limit. What a boy can do, you can do. What a man can do, Shebesh can do. I think you see that, isn't it? Yes. So if you want to be an engineer, be brave and say I want to be an engineer. Let the work you do and the marks you get in your exams take you to be an engineer. Are you together? Yes. Be a pilot. Anything you want to be, you can do. One of my biggest uh, um, initiatives with young, young girls has been self-esteem. Be confident about yourself. This young girl, when a young man stands up and says, I want to be a doctor and I will be an engineer, you find a young girl can come and be timid. But why? Yet the facilities these days are equal. There is nothing that is given to young men that's not given to young women. There is no opportunity. And that's why even we have affirmative action, where if we feel that young women are not coming out in numbers for this, we call them out and we give them directly. That's what's called affirmative action. So today, the same opportunities that a young man has, a young woman has, all I beg them to do is not to run into the family way too quickly. There is no hurry to be a mother. The right time will come for being a mother because when you become a mother at 18, you kill your career, progression, you kill your ambitions because now you have to be a mother. So I'm always, when I'm giving my sanitary pads, when I'm talking to young women, I tell them, please finish education. Please go to university. Don't struggle to go to university like many of us did much later in life because when we should have gone to university, we were busy making babies. It doesn't help. So what I'm begging you not to do is not to become mothers too early. And don't become wives too early. Please, pursue your career first. Pursue your career and you have the very same opportunities. If you run into getting a child, as I've told you, your school, schooling ends there, your ca career progression ends there, you immediately have to become a hustler of carrying that baby on your back and going to sell Mitumba. That, that just becomes your life. I don't want that to be the life of the young woman. I want to see the young woman in a college doing a, 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 a course that will give her a good future. I want to see her in universities. I want to enter Nairobi University, Kenyatta University, and see many young women pursuing their dream. And then eventually, I want to go to the corporate world and see young women. I don't want just to see young men. I want to see CEOs who are young, dynamic women. I want to see marketing managers who are young, dynamic women. And this is really the reason why, as Jubilee government, 
we have put so much emphasis on this affirmative action for young women, for whether it is the business circle or the professional.